In this lesson, we are going to redesign the home page. What you're looking at right now is the home page that I created. I wanted to keep it basic, wanted to keep it clean, but also wanted to make it easier for people to, you know, be able to find what they're looking for. So what I've done is I've added some things and moved some things around so they can be able to come directly on the home page and they can add to cart or they can click on a product uh, to view it. So I'm going to show you how this is done so that you too can, you know, follow along. I had to do, you know, kind of do some customization, but it, no coding, so don't get scared about it. You don't have to code anything. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I am going to, you know, let's work on this very top. Here. Let's start from the very top and work our way to the bottom. So we're going to add this social uh, icons here. And the way that you do that is by going to extensions and you want to go to templates. And then you want to click on the template. Remember that we have two templates that we're working on. We have the template for the site and then we have another template for the vendors. So you have to do this twice. So let's first go for the template for the main site. Now I want you to scroll down to the bottom here and this is where it says show social icons. What you have right now should be all blanks just like the, the Pinterest here. So if you have a social profile that you want to connect, you put that here. So whatever social profile that you want people to be able to go to, you know, you can put that here. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I really didn't put anything here. I just left that, you know, as it is. But you can put your, you know, username, Skype name, and, and things like that. So once you do that, you want to click on Save. Then this is going to show the social profile. So let me click on Save. So once I refresh the pages now, you see the links for the ones that I added. The Facebook, Twitter, Google, and so on and so forth. So that's how you, you know, change this part up here. And if you also want to work on this information or the contact and the number, you can do that as well from the same basics from the template manager. You can change the information for that as well. So if you want, let's say you wanted to change this, this number here and this, you know, contact. When you scroll to the bottom, you see contact information. This is where you can put in a contact email. And you can put in a contact phone number. So this is what users are going to see on the front end of the site. And then you can also change the email address to your email. So that they can just, you know, they can contact you with it. So once you've made those changes, click on save. So when you look at the changes now, you see that the phone number I just replaced it with. And you also see the contact email that they can contact you. So let's scroll to the very bottom here and let's say you want to change this all right reserve designed by June Shaper. You can change that by scrolling to the bottom right here where it says uh, the footer and it's a 2015 year company all rights reserved designed by this is just a basic editor that you can you know put text and you can also edit text to whatever you want it to be. But I'm just going to leave it at here because I want to, um, you know, I'm also promoting this Joom Shaper since this their framework they're using and they're a great partner of ours. So I'm going to leave that there. But you can change that to whatever you want it to be. And don't change the position because if you change the position, then it is going to change for that as well. So once you've done that, then you've changed the header right there. And you've also changed the footer. If you want to change the logo, it's very simple as well. You want to come right where it says logo and you have different options here. You have option for text or you have an option for an image. So when you choose the option for an image, then you have to click to select the image that you want to upload. Once you click, you can grab this from, you know, your computer or wherever you, you have it. And then you can just click at, and then also you have to, if you, you can add a retina logo. And a mobile logo. So when people come on the site, because this site is responsive, they're going to see a mobile logo. And there are so, you know, of course, the retina. But you want to make sure that you add a mobile logo. Uh, something that's not, you know, that's not too big. Uh, very small for, for cell phones and, you know, tablets and things like that. So you can, you know, design one. Just tell your logo designer. And they, they'll know what that means, you know, to get a retina logo. And then you can put that there. Okay, so once those changes have been made, then you can go to save and close. 
So you notice you have this menu here. And then also you have this little thing here for this icon when you click on it gives you this here. I'm going to show you where you can add items there if you want to keep it or if you want to remove it. So let's go first about you know working on the menu. So for the menu items we have the home products vendor and job social. But we're going to make some changes and add some things to it. So we're going to keep the home. We're going to add the about us. Leave the products. We're going to have somewhere for people to sign up. Somewhere that they can join the forum. They can connect on this uh, community net network. And they can also contact. So let's do that over at uh, the, the menus here. So what we're going to do. First thing we want to do is. We want to hide this vendor so that it's not visible to the public. This is only going to be visible after someone logs in. So when the general public come, they won't be able to see where it says vendor. But once you log in to the site, then you're going to see that. So let's let's click on the vendor. We're going to change the access from public. We're going to make this registered. So what that means is that every time that, the, you know, someone logs in or creates an account and they're able to access the site, they are going to see this vendor. So once you've done that, you click on save and close. So we're going to refresh the home page now. And when we refresh the page, you shouldn't see the vendor link. OK, so that disappeared exactly what you want. So next, we're going to add a couple more menu items. We're going to add an about us. So just click on new and we'll put in about us. And then where it says menu item type, you want to click on select item type. So once you've done that, I want you to go to content articles and you want to create new article. OK, this article, this is going to be the about us. So you can just put in about us and you can just put in some information about your company, you know, here. And you can also create a category uh, to add this particular item to. Since we already create one for products, we can add this one to it. Or if you want to create an additional one, you now know how to create categories and then just assign this page to that. So once you're done, you click save and close. And we're going to go back to the menu here and you want to click on articles and then go to single article. And the goal is to connect the about us page we just created to the front end. So this is the about us. You click on about us. And we're going to connect this to the front end of the website. So once you've done that, you click on save and close. So once you refresh the, the home page, you now have the about us here. So let's do the same thing. We're going to create other, you know, additional menus the same way. So we're going to create the sign up and then we're going to create the contact the forms and then the login. So let's go ahead and do that. And when you're creating a sign up here, you make sure that you want to use the user, the user type, and then you want to go to registration form. This is going to allow them to register. Or you can also just use the uh, community one here. Once you click on a community that allows for them, they can also register through there. So let's go back to the home. All right, so we'll have sign up. Then you want to click on save and close. And then for the menu item type, we're going to do the same thing. Go to users and we we'll just connect this to the login form and then save and close. Or you can do save and new. That's another easy one. Instead of, you know, going back and clicking new again, you just do save and new. And then we're going to do a forum. All right, for this, you go to menu item type. You go to system links and then you just want to go to external URL. Since we haven't installed the extension that we're going to use for the forms yet, we're just going to keep that basic. And then for the link, you just want to put this number sign. The number symbol there and then you click on save and close. So if they click on that, it's not going to take them anywhere. They won't be able to click on that. OK, so we'll have these here now and then we're going to you know, add the contact. While you still have the contact page up, you want to go over to components, contacts, and you want to go to categories. Okay, this already have an uncategorized here, so we can leave that. You want to go back to contacts, and we're going to create a basic contact so people can be able to, you know, send you an email if they have a question. Even though you have this contact us at the very top here, you can also add an additional contact link there. OK, so we're just going to call this contact us form and you want to go over to the form where it shows contact from live global. 
Okay, let's click on save. And then from the menu item tap type from the contact, you clicked on select. And then you want to go to contacts and then you scroll down to single contact. And you want to click here to select the contact you just created. And then you want to click on save. And then we're going to refresh this on the home homepage to see if that that's working the right way. Okay, so we'll have to contact this here. Let's click on it. So we'll have just this contact here. There's something else that you have to do. You have to link the user for this. And this is a great way because if you have, you know, a bunch of people on your team, you can connect, you know, each person with their own form. So you link that. And if you have an image to put, you can put there. And then you want to make sure that you put in an email address for where this is going. So email at email.com. So when someone clicks and submit, it is going to go to that email. And then where it says display, you want to make sure that it's set to the display format is set to plain. And do the same thing too for the menu. So you go back to the menu where it says display format. You want to make sure that's set to plain. And then you click on save. So when you come in the front end now, you see that you have the contact, you know, form here. Someone can be able to put in their name, put in their message, and then they can send. This is an easier way for someone to contact you because they can just send the message. With this, they would have to click and then or copy it and then send you the email through that way. So once you're satisfied, you click on close or save and close. And then I'm going to show you how you can remove this little icon here so it doesn't show up on the page. And you do that by going to extension. You go to templates and then you choose your template. And then you go over to the menu uh, tab here and you see where it says menu item type. You want to click on the drop down and just select menu I uh, mega menu. So select that and you click save and close. And once you refresh the page, you know, that little icon is no longer there. So now we're going to create this page here that you're looking at. So one of the first things that you want to do is you want to go over to um, extensions. You want to go to modules and then you want to go to this section where it says select type. So click on the select type and you want to locate the quick to cart product display. So you click on the quick to cart product display. And then what you want to do there is you're going to have you have at least one item that says the quick to cart product display from the previous you know lessons if you're you know following along. So you want to click on that. So I'm going to click on this one here. So once you open that module, you sh your should look exactly like this. Now you can name that whatever whatever you want to call it. You know, put whatever name you want to call it there, and then come here where it says behavior mode. Click on this drop down. You have several options here. Your options can be feature products, recently added products, top selling products, or whatever it is that you want uh, to, to put there. And then you can also choose the number of products to be displayed. Right now, I have two products being displayed in this particular module. So when you look at the home page, you see two products. This first two products are coming from this one here. So it's going to show the products like this vertically. So if you want to add more, you can definitely do that. But you want to set this to the, just put the number two there for now. You can change that later. And then for the pin width, you want to set that to 250. And for the gap, you want to change that to three. So this is going to say one instead of three. And then you want to come where it says show title. You want to make sure that this is set to hide. And you want to choose where it says module, uh, the position. So click on this. And type in position dash 10. That position should be unused on your end. So you want to click on position dash 10. Once you're done, you want to click on. There's several ways you can do this. You want to click on. You can either click on save and then click on save as copy. If you do it that method, this is going to save the module you created. And when you click on save as copy, it is going to automatically copy that same module, but it's going to add a different name to it. So, for example, let's say I made a change to this module and I want to, you know, save this. So I've clicked on save and I'm going to click on save as copy. So when I click on save as copy, you notice at the title, it changes. It's going to have the word copy next to it. And then it's going to, the status is going to be on publish. So you want to make sure that that is published and you want to repeat this process 
uh, four different times, just like I have here. I have four modules that are published, one, two, three, four, that I actually.